What's going on, everyone? This is Adam, your host of Cool Places with Cool People. And today, our lucky guest is my boy over here, Alan. Hey, say everyone. Hey, what's up? Alan, a.k.a. Kid Cam, a.k.a. Did by Kid. What's up? My boy, I've been wanting to do one of these with him. You know, when we're sitting in the chairs talking and micing and we're like, we were just talking before this, like, dude, we should have a camera on us every time you cut my hair because that is a podcast. So when I, <laughs> I was like, yo, Brant, we're starting a podcast, there was only one person I knew I had to get on and that was you, man. Bro, like, it's it probably, like, better content, like, in real, <laughs> in real time doing your hair, bro. <laughs> exactly, because we're a little nervous, like, cameras on us, mics in front of us, and and we know it's being recorded. So, just, I mean, definitely the biggest thing, man, it was crazy. And I told you when I walked in that you posted that photo of that chair in a garage. Oh, yeah. So it's like, how did you go from cutting hair in a garage to the position that you're in now where I feel like you're three, four weeks booked out and you're always slammed? What was that transition for you? Man, that shit happened, like, super, like, in a blink of an eye. I mean, it did happen, over, like, in a blink of an eye, but it seems that way. Um, I just like, just like most people with whatever you do, like you kind of just start with what you have. So, I mean, like at the parental's pad, like there's the garage, let me do something with it. So I just started, started from there, picked up some clippers and was like, let's figure this out. You yeah. Know? How long, were, how, what was the transition? So like, did you know you always wanted to be in cutting hair? And then obviously, you know, most guys are probably like, I want to work in a barber shop and you're more working in a salon. What yeah. was that decision to make? And how long did it take you to make that decision? Okay, so I'm going to have to go back a little bit. <laughs> um, I had no idea I was going to do hair for a living. I mm -hmm. really didn't. You know, when you're a teenager, you know everything. You're like, oh, I want to go to college and get a degree. And I don't know, life's going to be great. Um, get out of high school, working multiple jobs and everything. Um, I always got told, like, quit coloring your hair like that. Quit cutting it like that. I mean, I have long, boring hair now, but yeah. it's, throughout the years, just all kinds of crazy stuff but um so i was tired of jobs telling me like don't do your hair like that and i was like you know what i'm gonna go to hair school i don't i don't know jack about it but i mean i'm gonna go learn it because that way no one can tell me how to wear my hair which i think is funny because now that i am like a quote-unquote professional hairstylist like i have boring hair now. <laughs> yeah you're like that's long it's straight nothing really maybe i'll yeah. do the dreads in every once in a while but nothing too crazy yeah so like yeah didn't didn't know i want to do hair for a living but that that kind of influenced it i mean i was always messing with my hair um growing up but just i i didn't know anything were about you it. working with people's hair before you went to school just kind of messing around with people or did you not start that until after you went to school not really like i found this pair of clippers in my in my bathroom and like just the normal like i was back in the day with a little skater boy like if you needed a haircut it's just one size all around so, yeah I just mean, buzz I'd, it yeah i do that to myself and my brothers but that's pretty much it no i really got into hair i mean i'd always mess with my own hair but i didn't really get into it and wanted to learn more until the jobs were telling me to stop yeah. that, and then I went to school for it. Oh, okay. What school did you end up going to? I went to, uh, which is non-existent anymore, uh, I went to Marinello's, and then shortly after, I went to Roston Barber School. Okay. So, like I said, so you went from salon to barber. What has made that decision for you to stay not in a barber shop? Because we've had this conversation before. It's like, I'm not a fan of barber shops. I don't like going to barber shops. I, I never worked in a barber shop. No, that's exactly. So what yeah. was the reason in not ever working in one? Um, okay, so when I was growing up, I would, I would always go to, um, barbershops. They had the cleanest fades and tapers, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, not so much anymore, but at the time, like there wasn't really much scissor work going on okay. and you wanted like the texture and mm -hmm. like all the, all the, um, different like scissor work hairstyles and whatnot. So I would go to a barbershop to get my fade and then go to a salon to uh, get my, my scissor work done and, and, and or if I wanted color at the time. And I was like, dang, bro, this, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like in, um, I'm not thinking about going to, to hair school mm -hmm. yet. And I'm like, dang, bro, I spent a lot of money <laughs> for my hair and my image. <laughs> and then, so when it came to the decision, like I'm gonna go to hair school, I was like, I thought to myself, as I was doing that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to both schools. Cause I mean, why go back and forth to a barber yeah. song when I could just get it done in one shot? Like I want to be that guy that can fade and do scissor work mm -hmm. and or color if they needed it. Mm -hmm. So I went to beauty school first and then, and then barber school afterwards. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question of like why I've never worked in a barber shop. It's just that um, I, I would, since I went to both, I just felt more comfortable in a salon. Yeah. Uh, I felt it was a lot more 
and there's nothing wrong with a barbershop. I just feel like it, sometimes it's too, it's a little too casual sometimes where like your conversation is with the whole shop and mm -hmm. not just your barber. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As to where at the time when I was going to a salon, it's like, man, they really pay attention to you. Straight and to you. Want to want to know you and talk to you. And like the vibe was a lot more. I mean, it was chill and casual, but uh, I don't know if this is going to hurt people. I, I don't want to say it was more professional, but I was mm -hmm. just like, it just wasn't as, like I said, like it just, it just felt more intimate and more yeah. personal. So I think that's why. Well, and that's I the thing that. that I used to always struggle with with barbershops. You know, before what I did now, I used to be on the road all the time. So when I was trying to get a haircut, mm -hmm. you know, I was dating a hairstylist. So if I went to Fantastic Sam's or someplace like that, I got yeah. shunned because yeah. I never should go to a place like that. And so I would try to find that local barbershop and I would walk in and I was in smaller towns and I just felt like so uncomfortable because I wasn't one of the boys. Everyone looks at Everyone you. Like, looks at you walk guy. in and there are some <laughs> cities I walk in, I'm the only white boy and yeah. I walk in and I'm like, That's Hey, I'm just trying to get a haircut. Can you fit me in? No, nah, man, I can't fit you in. And so, that's probably the reason why, and I think for me, like I've always kind of leaned more to salons too, mm -hmm. as a guy, because it's like if I walk in and I'm not one of the boys, I do feel uncomfortable, and so I can understand that feeling as like, you know, when you have your hairstylist, uh -huh. you're like you're locked in with that hairstylist, and it's oh, just yeah. like, I mean, some of the stuff we even talk about, I'm uh -huh. like, no one's listening, like no one's listening to us because they're talking to their own clients, or yeah. it's just I I understand that vibe feeling you're talking Which about. Which is good because one thing that I can relate to the barbershop is I have a lot of quote unquote man talk. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, I'll never tell my client how to how to speak, but you know, obviously you got to be professional. So like. So a lot of women, children around. I'm like, I'll never tell you like not to talk a certain way, but I'm like, hey, I just want to really follow you <laughs> yeah, down a little, a little bit. For sure. But we're still men, you know. Yeah. We're just men in a salon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's all. Exactly. So yeah. where where are we at right now, and like how long have you been here, man? Uh, we are at the Electric Beauty Lab. I have been here. Dang, I don't even know. It might be three or four years this this summer. Like I said, man, I just once I started like hopping around salons, and then this one's this one has really felt like home. Uh, so I, this is the one I've been at the longest and I, I just love it. It's just, I can, I can truly be me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could just yeah. be myself. So. You don't have, you don't feel like there's that image you have to no. fit in. And speaking about image, the reason why I like this salon so much is like, if you look around, it's called the electric beauty lab, but it's not very feminine. It's very neutral. Mm -hmm. It has an industrial electrical theme to it. The way I dress is, um, you know, it's still casual, but I, I choose to wear all black because going back to what you're talking about when you when you walk into I mean not necessarily barbershops or other salons but like it could be other salons it's just that you see like a theme like this this is like this certain crowd that goes yeah. here no everyone's welcome in my chair and I feel like this place has like it's just really neutral you mm -hmm. know what I mean yeah so, and then did you ever go to like you know I know a little bit more than in the salon more of the hair game because you know obviously probably down this podcast and people that know me like I dated a hairstylist for a long time. You know, her process was fantastic Sam's and then, uh, you know, and then I was like, you got to go to a cool salon. Did you start at like one of those like entry level places <laughs> or you just went straight to no, like, funny, a cool salon? Funny you say that. Um, no, my hair bestie, shout out to Diza hair. Um, <laughs> she uh, knew we worked together at Macy's a while back just before I knew I wanted to do hair. So as soon as I get out of beauty school, she just yanks me into a fantastic sound. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, boom, you ready? Let's go. I was yeah. like, whoa, what? Like everything just happened really fast. So yeah, I, I did start out at a fantastic Sam's and, um, um, nothing against that place, but like it was, it wasn't for me. Like everything was like timely. Oh, well that's the scheduled. thing. It was like, like I remember out. it was like, you could never spend time with a client. It yeah. was like you had to be 15 minutes. So on as a, a man client, cut. you felt that. Yeah, like, as yeah. A, and I knew both sides. I knew yeah. I, as a client, I felt that, and I knew on the back end. But it's like 15 minutes for a men's haircut, That's and then crazy. try to sell them a shampoo. Like that was the two That's things. That's insane, yeah. man. Like, dude, I, I I might be crazy, but I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm the slowest cutter in the world. I could take anywhere from 20 minutes to like two hours on a dude's <laughs> yeah. haircut. Like, yeah, for sure. And I think, but I think the thing is, is um. You know, but that's why you spend your fourteen ninety nine a haircut there because oh, it's like that. you're paying per minute almost. <laughs> that's a dollar a minute. A dollar a minute to get your haircut at Fantastic Sam's, dude. Yeah. So, you know, you're here. You you've come from a Fantastic Sam's to now you're here for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And w how do you think the struggle is for a new hairstylist? Because I, I bet you get a lot of. DMs and calls like, dude, I want to get in the hair game. I see what you're doing. Not a lot. I have it a few. A few, yeah. yeah. So, what would be some of the advice you would give someone just starting out, 
maybe they just got done with barber school or and or it's thinking about going what is you know how do you start building up that clientele because that's really the hard part is building up that clientele and keeping them okay um as far as starting out practice and mess up Mm -hmm. mess up school is the time to mess up i wish i wish i was like less fearful of that because i I would like I relate my haircutting to skateboarding. Like I just watch a lot of other people do it and really try to mimic it. That way I can nail it right away instead mm-hmm. of like trying to fall. Yeah. But um, dude, be comfortable in school, or if you do work at like a one of those mm-hmm. entry level like places, just just mess up there. Like, yeah. Just go for it. Have a lot of friends. Do a lot of free cuts. Do a lot of free cuts. Uh, friends, family, all that. Try new things. It's so like having those friends and family is what's really going to help build you. Um, at least as far as your technical ability and everything. So building clientele is com- at least for me, I think was completely different for me. Uh, I don't know what it is, but something told me to like make your lifestyle, your, your income mm-hmm. and your, your, your clientele and your people. So my, I made it to a point, like I was like, Whatever, if I go to the grocery store, if I go to the gym, if I go to church, if I go to the bar, my favorite restaurant, whatever, I have to at least have one, two clients mm-hmm. there. So it's in a, in a way like you're you're keeping the business and the money circulating, you know. So I was that's how I built my clients. I was like, wherever I whatever I already normally do, I'm going to have a client one or two already there, there. Already there. You know what I mean? Because then, it's it's easier because they already like you. Yeah. And you do a good job. So it's like, well, why would they not come and use you? Yeah, it's, it's not fact, but I'm just saying, like, if you're constantly a local at, like, a coffee shop or wherever, mm-hmm. um, they're going to notice you coming there frequently. And then if, if you have a service or something to offer them, yeah. they're going to want to return the favor exactly. at least one time. At least you know? once and try it. That's yeah. actually a, a thing that Grant Cardone teaches. And, you know, if you're in the, you know, business, real estate, car selling, he always say, he's like, you never eat lunch at your office. He goes, you should go to the same place for lunch every single day and everyone should know your name when you walk in and everyone should know what you do. Dude. Because if you do that, someone will end up buying or selling with you or some someone's going to work with you because every day you walk in, they're going to know who you are yeah. and then it's your job letting them know what you do. Exactly, man. That's why I love my gym and coffee shop right now. <laughs> Dude, you're like, you're, you rock Kramers so much. <laughs> shout out to Kramers. Literally, shout out to Kramers. Like, if you're not getting sponsorship from them or a discount, literally, I don't know anyone who posts Kramer more than you. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, you know what? They, they try to like they don't discount me or, or they, they might or if they try to give me something free I don't I don't even take it I just mm-hmm. put the money right in their chip jar yeah you know what I mean? Tip no, for sure I think I think that's the one thing we talked about earlier before we even got on the podcast how great you're at Instagram mm-hmm. by showing your livelihood and reminding people you're a hairstylist but not being like just posting just done photos like I think that's a mm-hmm. big mistake a lot of hairstylists make or barbers or whatever mm-hmm. all they ever post is a, a haircut uh-huh. it's and it's like i know so much about you not just because oh it's like i know pff, i know alan cuts hair duh right yeah. but it's like that's I know, the main point but yeah it's like but i know he goes to kramer's all the time i know he's all up in the gym now he's losing weight <laughs> i know he's you know on vacation like you went hiking you went to utah Z- zion yeah you went to zion that yeah. was cool bro and i think that's something i'm gonna pump you up for a second how you do such a great job reminding people but then also reminding like yo i also am a dude just like everyone else and yeah. it's like and then when you come sit down with your clients like i like this guy i appreciate that um hair hair obviously is like see this is something questionable for myself like i i want to say hair is my passion i'm very passionate about hair but like sometimes i feel like am i just very extremely interested in hair mm-hmm. as another hobby because i still love break dancing i still love skateboarding mm-hmm. i still you know, music, it's that just didn't pay the bills at the time growing up and everything. Yeah. And I found hair and I made a career out of it. But at the same time, like, yeah, I just don't want to be known just solely. I like, like, I'd rather have people be like, oh, he loves hair. And like when he wants to get into it and study it and whatever, um, he, he's all about that. But at the end of the day, he's like everybody else. He has, he has like a, a life to live and, hob- and other hobbies, other interests. And that's what I try to show to everyone else is like, look, like my... I love hair, but it's not, it's not like purely just my life. You know yeah. What I mean? You know, so we, we, I want to wrap kind of back to you and clients, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're really trying to do this podcast for, for multiple reasons, but definitely trying to help people who 
so we can they can learn from the people that are already doing it so you know you're getting your clients from where you already go but how are, are you doing anything special to kind of keep those clients around so you're you know already keeping that return business um what i like to do with my clients just to anything i I'm, i firmly believe in too much of anything is not good for you and also like repetitiveness i mean it's good to be consistent but you can be consistent in, in a different aspect like i consistently tell my clients like all right, as the seasons change, so should your hair. Your hair is mm -hmm. part of your outfit. So when it gets colder, I try to tend to put them on the longer side. Let's grow this out. Or if it's hotter, like, let's go on the shorter side. But I always keep them I, – so I, I educate myself as well as I educate my clients. So I was like, if they want to do a certain style or whatever, like, this is what you have to do, blah, blah, blah. But um, – Sorry, I think I was going off on a tangent. No, but hey, listen, I go on more <laughs> tangents, and that's why maybe I started this podcast, just so I go on tangents but be taping it. Yeah. But, uh, like, anyway, like I said, like, hair is part of your outfit, so you still need to change it up. Do you, what do you wear in the summertime? Shorts and a tank top. Do you wear that in fall or winter? No. Like, no. do something different with your hair. So I think what retains my clientele is that they're, they're comfortable and they're, they trust me that, like, I feel like trying something different this time. And I, 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 like, I try to do my best to thoroughly explain to them, like, we're going to do this. We're going to shatter this. Mm -hmm. Parietal ridge. It might be throwing out big words at them, but then I'll go back and tell them what that word is, like, oh, the round of your head, bro. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Just go ahead and do it. Do it, yeah. So, and then I, I assure them that, like, if this doesn't work out, luckily hair grows. And because of the way I section hair, we can go right back to your old style, old no style. problem. So they feel more comfortable because – Knowledge destroys fear. If you, if you don't know that, you can't go back right away. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. But it's like if you tell them, like, no, nah, it's going to be okay. Yeah. They trust you more. So Yeah. I think uh, I, I don't even know if you do. I don't even know if you realize what you do, maybe because you do it so much. But I would say the number one thing I've noticed with you when I work with you is that, and I think a lot of hairstylists make this law, is that, the second you're, that guy person gets out of your chair, you're already being like, okay, like let's rebook, let's book your next one. Oh, that yeah. one, dude, that move right there, <laughs> I would say you don't even know, like you're not even bragging about that. That single move is so key because you're already filling that person up on the books. It's like what I yeah. do in my job, where I'm like, okay, when's the next time you want me to call you? Yeah. Because then I can put it on my schedule. You put it on your schedule. You're locked in at that point. Exactly. You're not waiting like, hey, yeah, text me in a week or let me know how your hair is looking in a week. Or okay. it's like you're already setting that next appointment. Of course. The second they get out of the chair, you're like, so three weeks? Yeah. Sounds great. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so no pressure. It's no, it's really no pressure to anyone. But the, the reason why I do that now, it's just like obviously there was a time you can call me like, yeah, show up today. It's, it's mm -hmm. crazy. But as you – to, to, all, to anyone that's that's an upcoming hairstylist barber, like you, eventually your clientele is going to build and and you want to like retain certain clients and everything, but the supply and demand is going to be there. So you have to tell them like without pressuring them, it's just like, you know, you're going to be here in a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, whatever their, their frequency is. So it's like, let me lock you down now because I'm not the same barber hairstylist I was a, a year two years ago. Mm -hmm. Like people like want to sit in the chair and they know they're going to get it done so i just tell them like yo i mean you've done it a couple of times where i was just like bro i don't got nothing today no i know, <laughs> you know man I mean? it freaking like, sucks like i'm like <laughs> yo and, but i always i always previous the text i go i i know the odds of me getting in is very slim today no yeah. but if there's anything i'll be there that's like, why i try not to let it get i just tell people all the time like yo if i if i don't answer you right away it's like it's i'm not ignoring you i don't think I'm like the, the, this crazy, awesome guy. It's just that my, my clientele is, so, is such a big, diverse variety. I have weeklies, bi-weeklies, tri-weeklies, monthlies, everything all in between. So sometimes I had to like really like just lock. I got people like I got one guy, uh, Lawrence and his brother, Andrew. Shout out to me here, brothers. They're weekly clients. So I have to lock them in. They lock in by the month because so what if I just only did like two appointments for them? And then, like, the monthly client from last month books, like, their fourth week. Yeah. And they're like, hey, dude, where's my spot? Yeah. Like, you know I'm here every week. So I have to be very mindful of, like, almost every single client that's very frequent. So that's why for any new people that try to get in with me, if anyone says anything, like, oh, well, it's so hard to get in with that guy. It's just, like, it's not hard to get in with me. It's just 95% of my clients, like, as soon as they get out of the chair, they already book, already their, next, with you. They already book their next appointment. And I tell people... Words of sugar free. If you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. So it's like <laughs> these guys that are like weeklies by weeklies, doesn't matter if it's Father's Day, Valentine's. Yeah, Mother's they want to look like, fresh all the time. Wedding, funeral, whatever. Like they're they're good to go all the yeah. time. So I mean, that's the benefit of, you know, 
having a hairstylist barber that's appointment only and whatever. When I think blah. like uh, for me, uh, you know, it's like I feel like when you find that one person, because mm-hmm. I used to have to bounce around all the time, man. It yeah. was hard finding that. And then when you find that one person, did you date at a hairstylist? I felt pressure. I was like, dang. Dude, are you sure like, you want to sit in my chair? No, but the funny thing is, I'm like the least. I'm like whatever. Like I don't yeah. care. Like you know what I mean. So I think that's uh but I will say it's funny when I do st- when when girls start talking about hair yeah. and I start dropping like words like I don't know a lot but I know enough and they're like how do you know that I'm like well you know I've been around the game for a little bit so <laughs> yeah. so are you doing anything like you know in our in my world it's a lot of technology stuff are you just straight up putting people in a calendar are you using like follow up text or anything like that or okay. or nothing like that or are you just straight like I'm in like, the calendar that's it yeah pretty much just the calendar like I tell people I'm half old school half new school so like yeah the, the tools are there there's the Facebook Instagram sorry Facebook I've mostly been on Instagram but <laughs> um, can, straight yeah. straight calendar and text uh, and call uh, people are like oh you should get a book. Uh, you know, they have all these apps to book now and everything. But the thing is, because I, I every client I have, like I said, I, I change their styles. One day they might want something else. It might take a little longer. It might take a little shorter. Mm-hmm. I do both men and women haircuts. So I can't have like something. I don't have it on lock to where I know it only takes me 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour to do a men's or women's cut. Like everybody's cut is, is different. So for the most part, most of my clientele are regulars. I know how long it takes to do their cut. I don't want to put that out on the internet or whatever. Like, oh, it says he has a 30, 45 minute slot. Let me just book him, book that spot. And then what if their hair service takes like an hour? An hour, hour yeah. Not, then you're you back know? backed up. And then yeah. do you, uh, are you, are you trying to, do you have a preference for men and women or you just don't care? Oh, no. No. I, I don't. No. Like, uh, people are like, what's your favorite haircut to do? I'm like, the one that works for the client. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I yeah. love how like uh, it's like certain people can't even do certain haircuts. You know what uh-huh. I mean? It, or, I noticed for you, like I think I saw maybe a few weeks ago, like uh-huh. you're still going to training, like you're still going to oh, classes. Oh, always, like, man. Like what is like? What are you trying to learn? What are you trying to get better at right now? Um. So, I just think like this is never ending. So, I mean, I I appreciate all the compliments and whatever people want to compliment me on and what I do, but I I'm forever a student. If there's nothing new to learn, there's always something you can remember or improve on, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I do a little bit of braiding, a little bit of curling up dues and whatever. I'm mostly a cutter, but that is, you know, like, I I still, like, I'll take a color class. Like, yeah. I'll, take, I'll take those classes, you know? So, I mean, like, uh, what do I want to improve on more technically? Um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I guess I want to get better at braiding and maybe more more like wedding style stuff oh, okay just just for myself like like business wise I, i'm not really mm-hmm. like i'm i'm a, i'm pretty good just doing like financially being in the shop, just, like financially not, just being a cutter yeah but, you're not gonna start rolling over but, to events and start yeah. doing weddings but if i want like just for me personally the like the art aspect and just being like like learning more i i would, would like to learn like maybe a little bit more like wedding curling curling Curl. iron stuff you know teasing hair Cause I think I think it's cool. I think it's interesting. I think it's crazy what people can do with hair. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. and or the vision that some people have that could be like, okay, I'm gonna look at this person. I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and they can change everything about them based on their hairstyle. Like, yeah, you really how you know. And there's some people that don't have that look. We were talking earlier. Some people are just talented at certain things, and it's crazy when you can see those people that are talented at hairstyle, and you have to respect that. Pause right there. What you said, hairstyling. Like, dude, that's important. I tell everyone there, even though I'm a cutter, like, finishing the haircut and styling it. That's that's really that's that's the money. That's that's the money. That's where you make your bucks, bro. It's not the clip. You know when I do your hair, dude, I just don't slap anything in your hair. Like, I take my time. I blow dry and everything, and I explain why I do it. Sick blow dryer you have. (laughs) Thank you, dude. Dude, His blow dryer is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Thank you. Who gave it to you? A client named Chad. Uh, I hope I can touch on the story real quick. No, go for it, Um, dude dude comes in here um so he was he met me through my last salon about like four or five years ago he's one of those walk in like i don't care i'll take anyone i don't really give a shit about my hair whatever blah blah i still happen to get him in my chair so i explained to him i'm like hey how how do you what do you like about your hair what do you not like about your hair what do you want it to look and feel like what do you want it to i don't care man just shorter on the sides but uh, something similar. I was like, do you have a picture or something i can get idea something like this i'm like and he's just like i don't care you know i'm like all right so i do his hair and everything and um, so I get done with his hair, and he goes, wow, that's a really good hairstyle. I like that a lot. 
I'm like, yeah, thank you. Appreciate you sitting in my chair, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He leaves. So I'm a commission style at this time. Yep. I work for the salon. Yeah. This guy comes back two, three weeks later. He goes, oh, I want that guy right there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I'm honored. He wanted to come back and sit in my chair. The guy who didn't care about his chair. Yeah. Or didn't care about his hair. Um, fast forward, like, freaking, oh, man. Like, all the way till just recently, um, the end of the beginning of this year or the end of last year? I don't know. Because he had to move to Texas. But until he had to move to Texas, he started getting his hair so much. We went from everything from like bald buzz cut to freaking grew his hair out and braided it. <laughs> yeah. And every hairstyle in between. We're talking about the guy that was like served in the army, didn't care about his hair mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, I think he liked to go to the, the, the last one I was at because all the girls were pretty. Oh. So <laughs> he didn't care who did his hair. Yeah, or exactly. Whatever. So he, um, he comes in. Like I said, either I can't remember if it's the beginning of this year or end of last year. He comes in. I'm working on a client. Say, for example, I'm working on you, whatever. We're, we're talking, chopping it up. He comes in, and, and I go, yo, do you have an appointment today? What are you doing here? And he's holding this big old box. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, what's going on? He's all, he's all, man, like, you know, at the time, he was going through a divorce and everything. So he goes, he goes, yeah, life's taking me to Texas, brother. I was like, oh, yeah, dude? And he's just like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to be going to Texas, bro. Um, I brought this for you. Consider it like your severance pay. I, I really appreciate you being my barber for the past four and a half, five years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, this, this dude's trying to make me cry. Like, what the <laughs> going on? So he's like, this is for you because I never cared about my hair until I met you. Mm-hmm. I opened one flap of the box. As soon as I open it, it says Dyson. And I just look at him like, dude, <laughs> you got your barber, the Dyson, before you got your wife or ex-wife, yeah. the, the Dyson. He's like, yeah, man, this, I, I know how passionate you are. And this is for you, dude. I was like, dude, like it just hit me. And I tell that story all the time to my clients to this day. Still, they're like, dude, that's a, that's a fancy blow dryer. And I was like, let me tell you a story on that. <laughs> like, they really enjoy that. Isn't so. it crazy? Did you would have ever thought be getting cutting hair would have turned into like that relationship where someone's literally like, that upset? Like you're one of the people that they have to say their goodbyes to. Dude, it's such an honor and such a blessing. A lot of my clients actually like, I don't, man, it's a lot, dude. Like. When they, they're coming in here, they're like, dude, my, my dude's probably tired from the gym or whatever. It's kind of nice that they kind of analyze my lifestyle and everything. They're like, dude probably didn't eat all day. Like, they'll bring me food. Well, remember coffee. when you messed your, your wrist up? Yeah. I you, couldn't even, you couldn't even make a certain motion? I was right, like, yeah, don't I worry, man. It's cool. I've done that before. Yeah, man. Um, so I, I, what was the question you asked? I forgot. The question is, is that could you have ever imagined just cutting hair? would get to this point where someone would literally have oh, to give you yeah, a, like no, a, a I, gift. They're, they're upset that they have to move away from you. Oh, man, it's, it's such a big honor. I know I had no idea. Like I said, I had no idea I was going to do hair for a living. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it, it's, it's awesome, dude. I, I, I truly – I don't like to – I'm not a very, like – I don't like to say anything confidently only because I, it might be my downfall. Like I, I fear, like, sounding, like, cocky or with an ego to anyone. Mm-hmm. But I, I truly do have the best clients, dude. They're, yeah. they're, they're freaking amazing, man. Well, I think just like the vibe that they give off just on just Instagram stories, just yeah. like the, the, the vibe that you guys give, just you can tell they're just happy to be here. Yeah, like they're man. hanging out with one of the boys. Yeah. Well, oh, that's one thing I wanted to touch on. Um, like hair school didn't prepare me for that, bro. No. Like they didn't tell me. Like they're, they're going to teach you how to be sanitary. They're going to teach you like the basics of cutting hair. And they're going to tell you that you're going to definitely be a therapist, a counselor, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, yeah, people say, I mean, it's not all positive. Like I wish it was always positive, but some people come in and they say some heavy stuff in the chair, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can't always be like, hey, what's up, Adam? What are we going to do with your hair yeah. today? And like and something happened to you and you want and you share it. And it's just like, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Like, But I tell everybody all the time, it's like, if I can't give you good advice, like I'll just leave you with a good word and do my best to make you smile, cause man, I I'm, tech. I mean, I think I can be a counselor, therapist, whatever, a comedian behind the chair, whatever. But at the end of the day, like I'm just a human being, like everybody else, and my whole life is more just like, just be a good person, love what you do, and just you know try to be of service to people. You know I, what I mean? I think you. I mean, definitely, like you just said, like you know, confidence, and that's probably not your. Your your strong set of being like I'm awesome. I know I'm great. Whatever. I don't I like I, I don't like saying that, man. Yeah, it's, but it's I weird. think that I think that you're probably downgrading what you actually do that helps people. 
right? Yeah. By by doing a great cut and making them look good or feel good, or you're giving people confidence. That's what's crazy. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, you've come out of a fresh cut, <laughs> right? You fresh cut, you're feeling good. You're wearing your, you know, you're feeling good. And you walk out of that door. If you run into someone, you're like, you know, you're looking good. Then if you walk out with a crappy haircut, and you're like, dude, I am not. I don't want to run into <laughs> anyone I know right now. If not, if you're a dude and you're looking fresh, you're like, where's that girl at that I've been wanting to see? Yeah. Um, I'm just honored for, like, people to share their story with me. So, like, whether it's positive or negative, whatever, I want them walking out knowing, like, the next day is just going to be better. Or if they're already having a good day, it just, like, super saned up mm-hmm. even more. Like, it just got that much better. Like, like, they can conquer the world. Yeah. Like, it makes me feel good to make other people feel good. Like, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it, their money, it's priceless, dude. Like, it's such a great such a great feeling i always tell people like when you're here in my chair this is your time out from your reality mm-hmm. you're gonna your career is gonna be there your family your friends like whatever's bothering you you know i mean i'm not a professional like i can't solve I, ultimately i can't solve anyone's problems but i mean and i'll just like i said I, I do my best to make them feel that like they can get through their shit storms mm-hmm. you know well, I think sometimes like I'll see like people in here and like you're having brews with them, and there's like oh, sometimes there's like yeah. four or five, six people just hanging out, yeah, especially yeah. later on in the night. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I think that the energy that you bring is probably what separates you from other people, you know, and, and really what probably keeps that clientele around. And I don't think, like you said, that's not going to be taught at no school. Yeah. And some people have it, and some people don't, and obviously based on the track record that you have it, you know, so. But what I want to end the podcast on is like, what are you trying to do? Where where are you where do you want to take this from? Like, if you are you ever gonna open your own salon? Are you just not sure? Are you just like, I just want to cut hair for right now and see where it takes me? Or yeah, um, right now, like, just kind of want to cut hair, you know, um, save up a little, and then just go from there. Whether like, I mean, I wouldn't mind opening up my own spot and everything. I still have to still learn that business. I'm sure you can help me out with yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, that's when you bring me in. I'm sure that's like that's more money and everything, but that's also more responsibility as mm-hmm. well. I think before the podcast, right, we were talking about like, you know, I think we were talking about that. Like, you know, you open up your spot, you have to make sure your staff's good. Mm-hmm. There's different personalities you work with. You got to see who's the right fit. So, I mean, that's later down the line. I just want to be happy right now and, and pay off some some debt. So and then it, I think it's cool. That I just do my thing right now. Maybe travel a little bit because, you know. As much as I'm, I'm a kid for life, you know, we're still, still getting older. So mm-hmm. I'd rather see stuff now than when I'm in like 40s, 50s, which is nothing wrong with that. But like, you know, so kind of just, yeah, just keep cutting hair. I, I think I'm going to have a couple of shirts coming out soon just to make a little bit of income for the people that truly like. There's people that already told me like, dude, if you had a T-shirt with your face on it, I'd buy it. I'm like, well, for sure. The stickers are just everywhere, man. I seriously <laughs> see your stickers everywhere. Slaps, bro. 90s yeah. forever. You know, that's what we did growing up. Yeah, and what was the reasoning? I mean, shoot, I actually want to touch this. What, who, whose idea was it to get, make the sticker, and why did you make it, and how did that all come about? So one of my clients, uh, BZ Beats, he got a character done by one of his homies, uh, Elijah. Shout out to him. So I just hit him up like, yo, I want a character too. I thought it was cool. And then one of my buddies uh, in the hair industry, uh, Leche, he goes, dude, that's it. That's your logo. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, well, let's just roll with this then, which actually turned out to be a really good thing. Because as far as like business cards and everything, like, you know, you got a business card, you see a pair of scissors or, yeah. or a barber pole on there or something. So like, you already know, it's like a hair person. And then like by accident, it was awesome. Like you just see my a character, like my yeah. face, you're like, what the hell is this? So you're forced to turn it around and read it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that, that worked out yeah. cool. So yeah, um, stickers are everywhere. Um, back to what we were saying, like, um, just, yeah, just, uh, so it's kind of figuring it out, you know, like just trying to be happy and. You know, it, it, the right time will come when it comes to opening up a place and whatnot. So, yeah. That's Perfect, it. man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, man, to do this with Dude. me. I really appreciate it. You know, it's just it was an honor to have you on here because of all the great things here. we talk about in the chair. And, like, know, maybe man. the next time you'll be doing a podcast and yes, we'll be in your chair, man. So thanks a lot. And no, I appreciate thank you it, so buddy. much. I'd like to do another one with you, hopefully, sometime. And good luck to you in your in your newer like episodes and everything. For sure, man. We will. Appreciate you, Adam. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, bud. Later. Woo!